All right, so I'm back out in the garage. Um, I was away on vacation, which was awesome to get away. And now that I'm back, I wanted to pick up where I left off. Um, unfortunately, just as I was leaving, I thought maybe I could assemble the Z-axis and get, uh, get things kind of tested before I left. Uh, but that wasn't really the case. I ran into a problem. Um, what the problem was, was I had accidentally um, tapped the screws on this plate or the thread holes on this plate with M5 instead of M6, uh, which means I cut the holes undersized. Um, I checked back in the CAD and I had, I had the wrong uh, hole size. So when I tapped it for M5, it allowed the M6 bolts to thread just a little bit and then the printed part was also interfering with the threads and holding them just a little bit. So everything seemed to be tight, seemed to be proper, um, but there was actually a, a gap that I couldn't see on the bearing block. And that was pushing the bearing block out, which was causing uh, everything else to not line up. So luckily there was no um, problems with the actual you know, milling of the plate, other than I had undersized those holes. So I went back um, and just used my M6 tap and cut new holes um, to replace the M5 threads on this plate and everything fit nicely. So I did that this morning um, and was able to, yeah, I took everything apart and uh, recut those holes and then put it all back together and everything fit as expected. Uh, so I'm just getting the computer and stuff fired up. I did um, get uh, a chance, like I said this morning, to kind of put everything together. Maybe what I'll do is, I, I did take some footage of that. I'll maybe cut to uh, that build montage um, and you can check out what, uh, what I did there. Uh, you'll see me, uh, I've already stripped it down um, and I'll basically put it back together and we'll return here in a minute. That was basically just the assembly process and, and what I did uh, to um, take it apart and put it back together. And now I've got everything kind of, yeah, tightened up and ready to go. Uh, so I was just going to fire up G-Sender and see if it was going to work. So the biggest thing I'm looking for is in the uh, A, just the Z travel up and down, make sure that that does what I expect it to, which I am sure it will. Um, but I'm just checking for any sort of binding um, or, or issues. I also need to verify. I'm pretty sure, 90% sure that I got the limit switch in the right uh, place for the Z axis. Um, but obviously I want to double check that electrically um, it's ready to go. Now I do see a small problem here. I haven't turned the board on yet. So that's good. I don't have the stepper motor connected. So I should probably do that. And I don't have the controller on yet. So uh, no worries there. I didn't, didn't wreck anything. Um, plugging that in live. And Um, so I haven't put the tramming components on yet. Um, basically what these do is uh, I kind of set everything. I got it uh, trammed. We'll, we'll double check it uh, a little bit later, just verify everything. But um, basically these little tramming bits go on here and allow you to push the spindle left and right. Um, but that requires a center screw 
on your mount to be able to pivot off of. And I don't have that right now. So I'm gonna do it without, um, but just note there are some tramming options built into the PrintNC um, design, which are pretty handy. Um, but I needed to make some adjustments to this mount to make that work. Um, this is also the tramming bar uh, for the overall plate. So the, the rear uh, Z plate, and it just basically mounts back here. Unfortunately, I cracked it. Uh, I think it was designed for M5 um, hardware, and I, or maybe I was supposed to thread it. I'm not totally sure. Uh, anyway, I tried to put an M6 bolt in there and I snapped it. Uh, so we have uh, a new one of these um, on the printer um, to accept an M6 bolt. So I won't put that on right now, but again, I kind of just used the square, got everything lined up as best I could for now, and we'll see how, how it goes. All right, machine in the lock state. All right, so I'm just gonna make sure that if I bring this up, nothing binds. I may want to do something a little bit different with that cable, but I'll work on that. Okay, and I alarm there. Okay, so that was by, um, that's the Z-axis uh, hitting the limit switch at the top, which is perfect. That's where I want it to hit, no binding. Um, everything looks like it has enough clearance. That all looks good. I'll clear that alarm. And we'll just take the Z-axis down. Found the bottom. All right, so let's just home it. Nice. Okay, bring that back over here. Okay, I need to uh, get some stuff cleared up, but uh, but anyway, I just wanted to, yeah, it, it homed, uh, which means that the uh, the X axis gantry plate is is aligned well. Um, I did. I did actually end up putting this together three times, um, and the last time was because I had forgot to tighten down uh, that plate, and so uh, so yeah, that didn't work very well. Uh, so as soon as I put everything together and started to poke at it, I realized very quickly that the um, realized very quickly that uh, the back plate wasn't tight and the whole axis was wobbling. Uh, so I've actually rebuilt this thing a few times now. Uh, the lesson, lessons have been learned along the way, I will say. Um, so I just wanted to, I have a quick take, tape measure here. So just for those that are, are kind of curious, uh, from the spoil board, uh, my spoil board is uh, 20, what is that, 23 millimeters to the top. Um, so from the, uh, 40, 40, uh, 40, 20, 40, sorry, extrusion, um, my spoil board is 23 millimeters off of that. So right now, if I go to the rear plate, I have 135 millimeters of clearance. So if you were to, um, do the same modification, um, you would end up with, right now, the way that everything is aligned, you would end up with 135 millimeters of clearance uh, from the bottom of the print and see Z plate um, to, I got one, uh, to the bottom of uh, the spool board. So overall, you have just about 100, and, just over 150 millimeters. Did I do that math right? 
yeah, 135, over 150 millimeters of overall Z clearance if you were to remove your spoil board or if you did something with a lower profile spoil board. Um, and then on the Z travel, so if I just go to here, so we're at 220 millimeters. And if I take it all the way down, I think my limit will hit. I'm not sure if I bottomed it out or if that's my limit, but I'll have to check that. Anyway, um, so we've got six. So at the bottom, the lowest point, I'm at six or 60 millimeters. And if I go... <laughs> Oops, that was not ideal. <sighs> My uh, limit switch, uh, I didn't screw the connector together, um, so it just let go. Lessons learned. Just let go away. I thought maybe the sensor didn't trip, um, but it couldn't trip because, well, it wasn't connected. Okay, so that's screwed together now, so we can't can't do that anymore, and that's good. Okay. Hey, that works better. Okay, so from its home position, um, two hundred and twenty. So that is two twenty uh, to the bottom of the spindle. Uh, just to the edge here um, but that's a hundred and basically it's 220 minus the 60 from the from the bottom so it's 160 millimeters of Z travel um, the nice thing with that Z travel is even with like uh, where's my you know, this is one of my longer bits uh, so this is a quarter inch um, quarter inch compression bit I use quite a bit so even if I was to put this bit in, Okay, so it's not it's not tight, but if I was to put that bit in, you can see I'm still with that 160 millimeters clearance, the spindle all the way up, I still have that 135 millimeters of clearance to the bottom of uh, the Z axis plate. So this bit is not below the Z axis plate, meaning that all of that is usable. The problem I was having uh, with the old uh, setup um, and the way that it was it was designed was that when I I needed my spindle mounted lower so that I could use things like the rapid change ATC um, and whatnot, this bit had to sit below that. So even though I think the Ultimate B gives you about 180 millimeters of Z axis uh, travel, um, it wasn't all usable because the way that I had to mount my spindle uh, was lower in the mount and that caused it to have the bit sit even lower. Um, and you can see that in one of my other videos where I go over why I made this modification. Um, so obviously now I'm going to have to go through and reset up my uh, rapid change ATC. Um, obviously I need to clean up the, uh, the machine surface and get a few things uh, finished up there. Uh, but ultimately this is super solid. Um, yeah, like, there is very, like, there is no notable wiggle, I guess is what I should say. If I bring the axis down and work the bit. But, I mean, there is, like, if I grab there and wiggle, I mean, I get a little bit of play, but it's, it's very little. Uh, so, overall, I mean, I think this is going to be um, a really good upgrade for me. Um... I have, like I said, the files are posted um, to Maker World. So if you are interested, um, those files are available. And 
Um, I did, I did print, um, I did print them. I didn't actually try them printed. Um, I didn't, uh, yeah, I didn't actually try the printed plates. I just kind of ran out of time and needed to get my machine functional. Uh, I am looking for like a used machine to have to maybe um, make some of these projects a little bit easier. So if I do find something, I may have kind of a machine. My goal would be maybe a, a smaller, like a 750 by 750 Ultimate B or something similar enough that um, I can play and do modifications to it while I keep my main machine running. Uh, but we'll see. For right now, this is mostly working, but I am at a point, like I said, where I need to get uh, get some stuff done. So I am going to put a wrap on the Z-axis upgrade. I am very happy with how it looks and how it turned out and excited to get it up and running and get some cuts done. Uh, thanks for following along. And if there's any questions or anything else, let me know. Um, but yeah, very excited to start to use this. Thanks for watching.